Good evening. It's good to see them back rooms full of people. Full of little ones. Teenagers. I don't got much voice tonight, and I'm probably going to just do some reading. Uh, I'd made a statement Sunday, or I said that we should be reading about this week and studying and the days leading up into the crucifixion and what happened. If you, how many of you write in your Bible? Raise your hand if you write in your Bible. Anybody that don't write in their Bible? Some people don't write in their Bible. I write, I've got different Bibles I highlight and write in. And Take your highlighter or whatever. Dry lighter works the best. Won't mess up the other pages. And mark those places that you'd never read or never saw before in this story that you've read and heard your whole life. A lot of times in church... If the preacher's hammering on something that is a political subject or just hammering down on something that everybody's had on their mind, then it would get a lot of amens and a lot of attention. But when the service turns toward Jesus only, a lot of times, from my point of view, a lot of people look bored. And they've heard it all their life and there's no greater story he is the reason that we're here and the reason if you're saved he's the reason you're saved but you pray for me tonight I've got plenty of allergies and I hope they ain't contagious turn to Matthew chapter number 27 I want to read you some things in this chapter and I just want to get to the point that I'm going to preach at Lord willing, Sunday morning in Matthew 27. But I want to want to look at some things in Matthew 26. Two with was a hard chapter for Jesus. Matthew 26. He goes to the garden and prays, and his heart's broke, and he's so burdened that. His sweat became as great drops of blood, and he asked God to even take that cup away from him if he could. And he said, if not, not my will but thine be done. He went a little farther and fell down under the pressure. Danny, it was so great he fell down under it. He cried again, and he said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. In other words, he was begging to get out of this if there's any way. He said, but not... My will but thine be done. That was his humanity, his pain and the the sorrow, and he knew what was coming. And in the same chapter, we see he had took communion with his disciples, doing he knew he told them, he said, One of you will betray me. And they were so confused, they all said, Is it I? Is it I? And he said, The same as he that dips his hand in the dish with me. And we all know who that was. Who was it? Judas, and Judas betrayed him right there in the garden with a kiss. And Jesus even looked at him and said, friend. And if you look on in those scriptures right there, it says, then the rest of of his disciples forsook him and fled. The other eleven forsook him and fled. Matt, the ones that he had, had saw all these wonderful things. The ones, now listen, he had even sent this group out two by two. And they performed the same miracles that he had performed. They did the same things. They were preaching and felt the power of God in their selves. They they had a taste of something that humanity had never tasted. They had saw these miracles and everything that he'd done. You know them all. I don't have to tell you. But they forsook him and fled. And the Bible said that Peter followed him afar off and even sat with the servants and warmed himself by their fire. Peter, the one that he named Peter, the rock upon this church, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That's some trust in that guy. That's some love for that guy. And 
Then Peter goes on down after they had took him and and listen to, listen to this right here, what it says, and I'm still in 26, but I want you to listen. They asked him, they said, you said you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, thou said. Nevertheless, this is verse 64 and 26. Nevertheless, I say unto you hereafter, ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now you imagine if Peter's in earshot, he's hearing this, he may not be. But he's there, Ron, he's there. And the Lord tells them that, and listen to what they done. Then the high priest ran his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witness? Behold now, we have heard his blasphemy. <clears throat> listen. What thank ye? And they answered this, He's guilty of death. Then they spit in his face and buffeted him. They spit in his face and they buffeted. I've never spit in another man's face. That's about as insulting and dirty as you can be to somebody is to spit in his face. And then they buffeted him. And others smote him with the palms of their hand and listen to what they said. Send prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who it is that smote thee. It's pretty bad, ain't it? But then he looks at his disciple that he took that saw Jairus' daughter raised, that saw the Mount of Transfiguration, that had been pulled aside and, and given a name and the other disciples that they, they didn't know they did weren't, weren't blessed to have that, that had walked on water. And when he was asked, Do you know him? He said, I don't know the man. They were in earshot because listen. They ask him again. Do you know him? I don't know him. They ask him again. He got so mad he cussed. He said, I don't know him. And Luke says that Jesus, turning his head, looked at Peter. The cock crowed. And he ran out and he wept bitterly. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like more than anybody could handle in a lifetime. That sounds like to me something that would make you want to just give up on everything if you could, and you don't even have the choice it's been took away from you Alan the ones that walked with you they fled the one that you trusted the most and said upon this rock I'll build my church now he's denied you the, your treasurer has betrayed you now you've been spit on you've been slapped in the face you've been buffeted at then you've been mocked by them said now a king prophesy unto us who it is that smote thee. Then they strip him down naked. Any one of those things. People fall out of the will of God and out of the, the, the presence of God and away from the people of God for stuff that don't even matter. But any one of those things would make me want to pack up my stuff right now, run and go home and quit. To be paraded around naked. How many of you would want to come up here Tonight and walk naked in front of this congregation. How humiliating. How embarrassing. They did this to Christ. They did this openly. It was a sham of a trial. He was innocent. But he said one of these days you'll look up and you'll see me in power sitting on the right hand of the Father. He never lied, and everything he said was good. But I want you to listen tonight, just a little while of some things that, that happened to him in chapter 27. If 26 wasn't bad enough, that was just the door opening. This is He done all this for you. Do you understand that? Now all I'm going to do is read a little bit. I'll be out of voice. I'm not going to explode my voice. I want it for Sunday. But I want to get some of this read. Let's go to verse 11. Judas has killed himself in the first 10 verses. You all know that story. The Lord would have forgave him. Do you believe that? But he felt like there was no hope. And Jesus stood before the governor, verse 11. And the governor asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. Let's look at verse 13. Then Pilate said unto him, Hearest thou? 
How many things they witness against thee? All lies. How many of you like to, well, some of you have done it. How many of you have been lied on on Facebook? Raise your hand. Derek has. How did it feel? Well, how would you like for it to be public? How would you like to, to be the crowd? And how would you like to be innocent? And all that happened. Had never done a thing. Just came in love. Just trying to help. When the people you're trying to help and love are lying on you, it's a different thing. Amen? Now listen to this. Verse 15. Now the feast of the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. They had a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. It's just like the government is today without politicking. People hear what they want to hear, and they say what they want to say, and they believe even if they know it's a lie. That's just like the world we live in today. It's that messed up right now in the United States of America in a lot of places. Listen, when he was set down on the judgment, seen his wife sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with this just man, for I've suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. I'd love to know what her dream was, wouldn't you? How many of you know this right through here? I'm, I'm going to run out of voice. They said, Let him be crucified. Let him be crucified. And the, he said, What evil has he done? And you know what they said? He said, What evil has he done? And you know what their answer was? Let him be crucified. Here's what we want. We don't have to have an answer as long as we know what we want. It matters that not the world we live in today. We don't have to have an answer. We don't have to tell you why. We don't have to have a reason. You've just got to know what we want, and we want it. That's what will get you in a mess. Amen. I want to get down here to this part right here. Let me go. Let's start in verse 25, and that'll get me to the, give me about 10 more minutes, and we'll go home. You pray for my voice, because I want it real bad Sunday morning, because I don't plan on teaching. Listen. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our, on our children. Same, day, same today. Same today. The children do not matter. We want what we want now. Am I right? Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when they had scourged Jesus. Do you know what scourging means? Somebody tell me what scourging means. To whip him to death. To whip him. Anybody ever had a whipping? Before my dad got saved, he was pretty rough about giving me a whipping. And I remember getting one one time. I went down to a pond that I wasn't supposed to go down to. And I was little. I was, wasn't as old as, nearly as old as Bubba. I was little. And James, I remember that whip, and I remember him with a belt or a hickory. I can't remember which. But I know my feet did not hit the ground for 100 yards. And every time they did, he picked me back up. To the point it caused trouble with him and my mom. But I was little. Can, can you imagine Jesus as a grown man, stripped down naked, mocked around him, already been slapped, already been buffeted at, already been hit by the palm of their hands. He's already been bleeding. He's already hurt. And then Derek, the ones that want to let him go, the, the one that, that said, I'm going to let you go, I find no fault in you, he still got his peace on him. Are you aware of that? Before he let him go, Crystal, he said, we're going to scourge you and beat you before we let you go. Just to satisfy the people. Just to give them what they wanted. Honey, he done that for you. He said, you think now that I couldn't call 12 legions of angels and they couldn't come stop this? But it is so that the scripture must be fulfilled. <laughs> Hear me tonight. He done that, Danny, for one reason. For me and for you. He took every bit of that for my sins. Just like it was me. He took every bit of it. At any point he could have said stop. 
They would have had to stop. At the tomb, they fell over. They shook and fell over. Now, so you think he couldn't have made them soldiers do that? Sure he could have. But he took those 39, he took those stripes for our healing. Bless his name. They scourged him. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus like a dog into the common hall and gathered together unto him a whole band of soldiers. Oh, they're making a sport of him. And stripped him and put a scarlet robe. Listen, put on him a scarlet robe. And listen to this. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. Can you imagine that them thorns plaited down in your head? You get a little bee thorn in your finger, that thing gets so sore, you can't stand it. Can you imagine it? Plat it down on your head. Push down, Alan, cutting and grinding into the bone, into the skull. I got hit by a scope. And it still hurts. One little bitty cut. Randall, could you imagine all the way around your head, push down, then they put a, a reed in your right hand, and on top of that, those soldiers bowed down, and Matt, they mocked him and worshipped him, called him king, and made fun of him. And God, the Father, the Father, His Father, watch this, but the Son held the wrath off. He is our mercy seat. He, he, he is our redemption. He's our salvation. He's the only price that, that God would take. And how God didn't say that's enough. It said it pleased God to bruise him. I'm just letting you know how valuable. Oh, how he loved us. How valuable you are to him. That he done that. He, he was God. He was God. Didn't have to do a thing. Can you imagine? A whole band of soldiers gather around him. Bow down and mock him. Listen. They bowed down before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And then they spit on him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Smote him on the head with the very reed they'd put in his hand. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put, on his own, put his own raiment on him and led him away. Led him like a dog again. Led him away. Led him. Like a dog on a leash. Led him behind him, drug him. Led him. Led the Son of God. Beat to death. Striped to death. Mocked and spit on. Took his clothes off. Put them back on. Making fun of him. Calling him out. And now they're leading him down the road like a dog. Can you imagine? How far would we have got till we said that's enough? I don't know about you, but I'd have done it pretty quick. If it was me, if it was one of my kids, I'd have stopped you before you got to them. Listen to this, and we'll be done in just a minute. I mean, I'm getting close. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and compelled him to bear the cross. A man that'll bear the cross is a man. You men, listen to me. You want to be a man? Bear that cross. Pick up your cross and follow him. I heard a fellow say one time, if you turn a man-eating lion out on King Street, it'd starve to death. It ought not be that way. Being a man is not being physically tough. That's physically strong. God gives most men that. That's why he's a man. 
But being a man is not being dominant over other people. Being a man is following Christ and carrying his cross. And being compassionate and being loving and being willing to do whatever Christ wants you to do. That's being a man. This man gets pulled out of the crowd. And I talked to Derek about it. I don't know if he's a believer. I don't know if he wasn't a believer. I don't know what he was doing. But he bore the cross. Read this in Luke. Read this in Mark. And John's account will have more details than any other place in your Bible. Go find it. Go find it from the rest. And read through this in every book. It won't take you long. I read them all four almost every day this week. If you'll go read those, I promise you, and highlight, you'll get so much out of it that you've never got in your life. This verse right here, verse number 36, listen to this. I'll read you a few more verses. We'll go home. Listen to verse number 36. And sitting down, they watched him there. They crucified him, parted his garments, and then sitting down, they just sat and watched him. Anybody ever noticed that in the Bible? Kevin, they just sat down. They said, let's just sit down and watch him. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he says. Let's see how he acts. I'm afraid a lot of churches, that's all they're doing. They're not part. They're not partaking in him. They're not sharing him. They're not loving him. They're just willing to sit down and watch him. Just to see what happens. Just to come into the house of God to see if something happens today. Boy, we can do way more than that. He's blessed us so good, Miss Reba. We got so many opportunities. But they just sat down and they watched him. Verse 37, they set up over his head an accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And there were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And they that passed by, he's had enough, ain't he? When a boxer, James, is in the ring, and he's getting beat to the point that it looks like he might not make it out, somebody throws in the towel and says, That's enough, right? It seems like it would be enough by now, don't it? Don't, don't it seem like somebody, even, even the Roman soldiers that are trained to do this brutality, they said it had never been a man mired as he was mired. His visage, you wouldn't even know that who he was or even that he was a man, really. Doesn't it look like somebody, Derek, would say that's enough? But listen to what they've done to this man that's beat to death. And they that passed by reviled him. So they give him an attack with words. Randall, they verbally attacked him. Hanging on the cross. Dying. They verbally attacked him. Get in one more shot. Before he dies. Wagging their heads. Man, that makes me want to punch them right in the mouth. Don't that upset you? And saying, Thou destroyest the temple and builded it back in three days. Save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from cross. And that's as far as I want to go without getting on myself Sunday. We've got every right to celebrate because if the book ended right there on a Wednesday night, we'd be awful sad in the house of God. If the last words of the Bible, Matt, were come down and save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, and it ended with a period, man, we just as well went to the ball game tonight. We should have done something else, Danny, because we would be wasting our time. This would be foolishness. There would be no point in it. There would be no salvation in it. There would be no hope in it. But thank God it does not end right there. It's Wednesday now, but Sunday is right around the corner. I mean, Sunday's coming quick. Man, Easter got here fast this year, didn't it? Do we got here fast? <coughs> I want
I want you to read that. If you, if you got time to read your Bible, if you don't, you ought to make time. At least find one of those books. I read out of Matthew tonight. So at least find Mark, Luke, or John. John is the most detailed. John tells stuff and tells it different than Matt, everybody else. He, there's names mentioned in there that nobody else mentioned. There's people in there that John includes that, that nobody else talks about. They talk about different accounts in the tomb, but it's all the same. It's all the gospel. It'll all do. But if you'll meditate on that and chew on that, that'll help you, I promise. Amen? What is that, preacher? That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is salvation. That is hope for the saint, salvation for the sinner. That's all I'll give you tonight. The, the, the best messages you've ever heard in your whole life that left him out and didn't have that in it, they're good to hear and they'll help you on your daily walk. They will not save you, but this will. Amen. Stand your feet. I'm done. Let's pray. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, God, for your word and for this story. And thank you that it don't end at the cross. It don't end with the soldiers mocking you. God, thank you that it don't end with you giving up. Lord, we're so thankful. Lord, help us to see this and understand it. God, and love you more for what you've done for us that nobody else could do. Lord, I love you. Thank you for all you've done for me and my family. Lord, I don't take it for granted. In Jesus' name, amen. Fellowship, love.